Kia ora. Thank you for attending the significant press conference in New Zealand's history. With recent world situations leaving our country spread further apart, we want to bring ourselves back together. And after months of research, we have discovered that the best way to do this as a nation is to qualify for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. And to do this, we need the best man for the job. This man has experience unparalleled to anyone else. He has won the Champions League with Real Madrid. He's won the league with Real Madrid. He has only gone and won the Premier League with Arsenal. He's even done bits down with Salford, getting them all the way up from the league too. I know it took him a while to get to the Premier League, and I know he did get relegated, but he did a good job to get to the Premier League in the first place. May I please announce the brand new New Zealand manager, Raxo FM. Any questions? Yes, weren't those achievements all done on a football simulation video game? To be fair, it is a very realistic football simulation video game. Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of the FM21 New Zealand Road to the World Cup with me. Raxo FM, where hopefully we will be taking a nation, New Zealand, all the way from the Oceania World Cup qualifiers to as far as we can get them in the competition. A country with a population of only 5 million and a side that have only ever reached the World Cup finals twice in their history. Let's make it three times, let's make it a good series. And before we jump into it, make sure that you do subscribe to the Raxo FM channel so that you don't miss the daily Football Manager content that will be coming your way with this series and transfer guides here and there, as well as liking this video if you are excited for the series ahead. 12 likes on today's episode would be incredible for the start of a new save. The only trophies this country have ever won is the Oceania Nations Cup and the Olympic Games Oceania qualifying as well as the Pacific Games trophy. We have made the World Cup twice, as I said before, and our first time, it was in 1982, where we finished fourth in our group. And then in 2010 in South Africa, a very historic one, where we were the only side to go undefeated as we drew to Slovakia, then Italy, then to Paraguay, but couldn't make it out of the group in third place. For the last two World Cups, we've lost to Mexico and Peru to make sure that we haven't qualified. We've always gotten out of the Oceania qualifying, but it's whether or not we can beat a big side, which is going to be our challenge in this save. But we are lucky that right now, New Zealand has some of the best talent it's ever had, with Chris Wood, Winston Reid, Joe Bell, Kerwin, Thomas Singh, all being amazing players. And let's meet the entire squad that we are taking to play through all of our Oceania World Cup qualifying games. In goal, we have three options. Our first one being Nick Zanzev. Unfortunately, even in New Zealand, I struggle to pronounce names. He's not a bad third choice goalkeeper, but we'll see who is beating him. Michael Wood is our backup with a three star current ability and lots of brilliant stats, as well as a bit of potential in there to potentially be our best goalkeeper in the future. But our number one for Wellington Phoenix and for New Zealand, it is Stefan Mirinovic. He is coming in as our best goalkeeper by a wee margin, but we definitely will have some rotation if he's not doing the best. But for now, he's our number one. In defence, we have a lot of players. Our first one being the 32-year-old Michael Boxall, who's currently playing in the MLS for Minnesota. He's got some experience playing in New Zealand, some experience playing in South Africa, so hopefully he can do bits for us in that centre-back position. We've also got one of our star players, Liberato Kakache, who now plays up in Belgium after transferring from the Wellington Phoenix for a tidy fee of £1.1 million. He is a great player for the future, as well as an amazing player for right now. He is easily starting every single game in that left-back position. Next up is Te Artify Hudson Wahongi, who is a Wellington Phoenix player who unfortunately in real life hasn't done very well to break into their side, but he's got a lot of experience in the New Zealand divisions. He's got some good stats, he's definitely a solid centre back and can even play as right back. Good rotation option, not our best player in the world though. Next up is Nico or Nico Kerwin, who is playing for Western Sydney Wanderers in Australia right now, out on loan from an Italian side, so it's good to see him getting some game time. And he's doing a good job with his stats out and right back. He's going to be a great option for us in there and might even start quite a few games. 
Another left back option is James McGarry and he can even push forward to the left wing but I think he's more of a left back based off how we've seen him play in real life for the Wellington Phoenix. Definitely a good backup option for Kakache. Not quite pushing for those first team spots just yet but definitely a great player to have on the plane. Another right back option who can even move up into central midfield so I love the versatility of this man, Tim Payne. He's had a lot of years down in the New Zealand divisions but he's been called up to the Wellington Phoenix and he's been doing really well for them in real life. Even had experience with Blackburn Rovers, never playing a single game for them however but that experience will hopefully mean that he is a decent player for us in this national team. We're now seeing a big name, Winston Reid, a player that a lot of you will know as a West Ham centre back, he's got brilliant ability, even though he's 32 years of age, he's still got it in his locker. He went on loan to the MLS and in this save he's going out to a Danish side, I believe, so it's good to see him getting some game time out there in the, in the potential future. But for now he's going to be our best centre back, starting every single game that he's fit, and I love to have him as a New Zealand player. And last but not least, the man who's going to be, in my opinion, well, I am the manager, so my opinion is the one that counts, Winston Reid's centre-back partner, Tommy Smith, with three-star current ability and some brilliant stats to go alongside it. Playing for Colchester down in the Skybet League 2 right now, used to play for Sunderland but unfortunately didn't get the game time there. Has had some experience all the way up in the Championship for Ipswich, then moved back down to the MLS, but... He is definitely an experienced centre back with the ability to back it up. Welcome to the squad, Tommy Smith. Moving into the midfield, we have Costa Barbaruzzi, a man that I definitely wouldn't describe as a midfielder based off the fact that he's a right winger and a striker. Got enough finishing about him, got enough pace about him, and he's a very experienced man with 52 caps for the New Zealand national team. 31 years of age, currently playing for Sydney FC. Got lots of experience, doing quite well in real life, and I'm hoping that that real life form can translate into these group stage qualifiers. Up next is Joe Bell, who somehow as a four-star current ability. I didn't realize he was that good in real life, but I will take it if he actually is. Currently playing up in Norway, so doing very well to get up into those sorts of divisions. Definitely gonna be a starter for us in that central midfield role. Definitely a quality player. Only 22 years of age as well. Don't know if those stats quite translate to the four-star current ability, but if we put him as a deep line playmaker, we can see he hits all of the stats that he needs, so hopefully he can do a job. And next up we have Clayton Lewis, a man that's playing for the Wellington Phoenix right now, just scored his first goal at Westpac Stadium, which is now considered to be Sky Stadium, but I still call it Westpac Stadium. He's two and a half star current ability, three star potential ability, some decent stats, I like his versatility, playing in central midfield, right wing or cam, so he brings a lot to the table and is a great rotation player to have in there. A player that a couple of you might have forgotten about since he's been dropped by the Phoenix, Callum McCower, who is now playing all the way up in Denmark, so I don't know if he was exactly dropped by the Wellington Phoenix, but it's good to have him back into the national squad, doing some good bits with his stats, hopefully he'll get better in the future, but with focusing on the right here right now, he's got a bit of pace, he can play right wing, left wing, striker, I like the versatility, I like the man, he's coming on the plane. The 29-year-old Marco Rojas is up next, able to play on either wing, maybe even in the central attacking midfield spot if we need, but he has definitely got some brilliant stats. Had a few stints over in Europe, but never quite made it stick. He's always been more suited to the Australian game for Melbourne victory. He's been doing all right this season in the simulation, but in real life, he's kind of fading a wee bit, but he's still got a lot of class about him. He's only 29 years of age. He's got experience in the New Zealand national side. Let's make sure that he fires early in this competition and gets us a lot of goals and hopefully a couple of assists. The grandson of a New Zealand legend, Winton Roofer. This is Alex Roofer, who can play in the central midfield spot or the central defensive midfield. Again, he's just a bit of a rotation player. He's one of those fringe players, but he's made the cut, and I'm happy that he has because he's got some experience for the Wellington Phoenix. A couple of caps for the New Zealand national side as well. 24 years of age. A bit of room to improve. Good physical stats. He's definitely going to be an asset. And now we have another big man, Sapreet Singh, who is playing over in the Bundesliga right now for Bayern Munich, but is on loan to a, a Bundesliga 2 side. Not doing too bad with them at all. And he's got an amazing set of stats for this squad. He's a fairly ambitious player, central attacking midfielder who could play centre midfield or anywhere on the left or on the right if we really needed him to. 
He is an amazing asset to this team. He is going to be one of our best players, hands down. Hopefully he can get lots of goals, lots of assists, and get firing early on because he is a star man. I feel like my knowledge of the New Zealand national side is pretty good, but I've never heard of Marco Stamignic, but he is an amazing player in this game. Got a lot of really good stats, got some potential for the future. Playing over in Denmark, he used to play for the New Zealand National League. But I'm happy that he's getting some experience over in the top flights because he has got some brilliant stats already. He's going to be an asset, a hidden gem, but a hidden gem that I'm welcoming to the club with open arms. Potentially our biggest player so far, Ryan Thomas, currently playing for Shakhtar in the save. I'm pretty certain that's not accurate in real life. I think he's still hailing at PSV, but he's got a lot of experience in the top flight of Holland. I'm sure he can bring that to the table with us. Got some great stats playing down in that cam position or even the central midfield. Honestly, he could play just about anywhere on the pitch. I love that versatility that he brings. He has got such good stats, lots of experience. Only 27 caps for the New Zealand national side, but I don't think that's going to make a difference. He is a top class player and hopefully he has a top class season for us. And last but not least in the midfield, again, not sure if I would define him as a midfielder. Maybe more of a centre back to me. But Bill Tui Loma has a lot of experience in the top flight of USA. Playing for Portland, playing for Portland, I thought there was more teams than just that. As well as Marseille, he was potentially going to be a breakout player for them, but it never quite happened. And now he's just playing down in, uh, you know, with no club. But he's definitely got the ability to be in our squad. Nice bit of versatility as well. Definitely an asset to the squad. And moving up to the attackers, we've got Maya Bevan, a man that has played a lot in the New Zealand National League, but has finally broken into different sort of competitions, now up with a South African side, not doing too bad at all. And I like the versatility that he brings for us in terms of different sort of approaches that we want to play. We've got a very target man-ish striker at the moment, who we will be covering in just a second, but he's got a wee bit more pace about him. He's got a bit of finishing. He's going to score some goals if he comes off the bench. I like what he brings to the table. Welcome to the squad, Maya Bevan. And last, but certainly not least, you were all waiting for it, Chris Wood. He is going to be our star man if anyone is getting us into the World Cups. It's going to be this man. A man who plays, I've called him a man about seven times when describing him, who plays for Burnley up in the top flight of England. Lots of goals, lots of assists every now and then. He is an absolute star. He is going to be our captain. He is going to lead this country. He's going to try and lead from the front by scoring a lot of goals. I think he's going to do exactly that. Brilliant stats. Being able to play as a complete forward, target man, pressing forward, like anything that we really need. Chris Wood, you're going to lead us to glory. Don't let me down. With that team selected, we now have to focus on what we're actually trying to win. The World Cup Oceania qualifying section. We're in Group A. There's two groups. Only the top two teams go into a playoff competition to find out who is going to be then facing an even better side to potentially make it all the way to the World Cup Finals. We've got Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Son Solomon Islands, Tahiti, Vanuatu in our group. And in the other division we have Cook Islands, New Caledonia, Samoa, Tonga and Tuvalu. So we don't have the most insane teams to face. So I'm very hopeful that we can come away with lots of wins. As far as our schedule goes, we've got all of these games to play in the next window of international break. And we will be covering all of those games to ensure that we are the side that is topping the group. A bit of history on the save. This is one that I actually made ages ago and we did very well in a couple of friendlies like i know that we've lost a lot of them but the teams we've lost to are decent sides and we've even gone and beaten egypt in there we've also beaten costa rica 5-0 we've gotten away with a couple of good wins here solomon islands draw is a bit disappointing but hopefully we can get some redemption as we face them in the world cup qualifiers the first game that we're going to be playing is going to be in today's episode against Fiji. Then we're going to be playing the next four games in two separate episodes to find out if we are going to be moving on to that next phase. I really, really hope that we will. So now there's only one thing left to do. Confirm the squad that we have. Take one last look at it. Make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. We've got Marco Stamenkic out on injury right now, but he's going to be fully fit by the end of this World Cup qualifying round window you know what i'm talking about and now we're ready to go 
we have got the squad and Sam Sutton's the only man that's been dropped. Unfortunately, he isn't even considered a left back. Not exactly what I would describe him as based off how he's been playing for the Phoenix lately. Not exactly a cam, so it does show that we do have not the most up-to-date save of all time, but we still have a brilliant side. Let's jump into our first game as a New Zealand boss, well, the first competitive game as a New Zealand boss against Fiji. If we can start with a win, I'm sure we're going to go ahead and win the entire thing. Oh, that rhymed. The New Zealand national duty begins. We're going to hold a team meeting. I don't really know what to say. I feel like expectations are high. Apparently they're all let down by the only thing that I could say. That's the only thing I could say. Don't, don't get mad at me. I feel, I what did I even say? This is the kind of stuff I should be reading. Um, let's go respect those of you. Oh my gosh. I've, I've already messed it up. How have I messed that up? I had one thing to say and they reacted. I'm, I'm not happy about this. Well, okay. If we don't beat Fiji, I'm blaming it mildly on Football Manager. We're ready to go for the first game. Solomon Islands have already beat Vanuatu. In the other group, New Caledonia have already beat Tuvalu. I apologise if I'm pronouncing that one wrong. But we're ready to go against Fiji. If we look at the pre-match analysis thingamajiggy, we are definitely expected to come away with the win here. The favourites. And I think that this Fiji side are going to be the hardest team in our entire group. If you take a look at everyone else, Papua New Guinea is a heaty. No one else really scares me. I mean, Solomon Islands definitely aren't bad. They drew against us the other day, but I think Fiji are going to be the best side that we're facing. So with that in mind, I'm bringing the best squad we possibly can. We've got Chris Wood up top, of course. Barbaroos is Rojas, Singh, Thomas, Bell, Kakache, Smith, Reed, Kerwin, and Marinovic in between the sticks. We've got a lot of great players on the bench as well. It's going to be a long couple of days, so we're going to have to rotate. But I think starting with our best 11 against the best side makes a lot of sense to me. That makes sense? I feel like that makes sense. We have been using this formation and this tactical approach within the last few friendlies and it's been going okay we have been getting a lot of good results from the friendlies that we've been playing as i showed before so i'm tweaking that a wee bit against the side that i know that we're better than by using the gagan press but with a couple of tweaks here and there so we're going to be hitting early crosses as well as going not quite so high tempoed just with higher instead of very high and then within the defensive lines and the instructions on the transitions we're just going to be taking those short kicks off to make sure that we are retaining position so that's what we're going with if it doesn't work i might just go back to a normal gagan press might dip back down into a more of a defensive shape as bell can move into that role i like that versatility that he brings sing can move into the central midfield there's a lot of stuff going on in my brain i've got this covered we've got this win covered let's make sure it happens let's submit the team there's no turning back now a couple of players not fully match fit i don't care they are the best players for the job. Let's take a look at this Fiji side that we are facing. I already saw one man, the captain that we are playing against. He is the best side. He is the best player in the entire competition who isn't in the New Zealand team. I would say Roy Krishna up top. We do not need to be seeing our team. Let's just click on this man because he is brilliant. Had a lot of great years for the Wellington Phoenix. Now playing in India, doing a really good job for them. Everyone else in the Fijian side. Not really aware of who they are, so I'm hopeful that we're going to come away with the win. Ignorance is bliss, though. We're away from home. We could be shocked. Let's make sure that we aren't. Seven minutes gone. We're on the ball for our first opportunity and our first goal. It's Marco Rojas linking up with Winston Reid. The man who scored against Slovakia to get us one all in the World Cup has scored to get ourselves ahead in the first game here. And surely there's a sign of things to come for this one. Seven minutes on the clock. Our first opportunity, and it's our first goal. Marco Rojas with a great ball into the mixer, and I was really hoping that he would get some assists from that wing position, and I'm already seeing Kakache is injured, and I'm not risking that. I want him off. I do not want to aggravate an injury. McGarry's coming on. And I've just realized that McGarry's our only other left-back option. We've got a lot of players who can play in that, that uh, right-back position, but not many that can play in left-back. Kerwan, he can't do. He can't do it. Tim Payne, maybe? No, he can't do it either. Okay, well, I might have to really analyse that and stay, take a look at who could potentially play there if we keep getting an injury in that left-back position. But for now, we'll bring McGarry on and hope that he does well. We almost got that ball through there on our second opportunity. 
But Fiji are on the ball now. We shouldn't write them off too early. We're definitely the better side out here. But they've got pace up top. They've got a couple of decent players here and there, I imagine. No one I really know, so I can't confirm or deny that. But they've whipped in a good ball and they've just hit the woodwork. And that is a little bit of a warning. Not to disrespect them too much. McGarry's coming on and they have a corner and we're showing the highlight. Are we picking it up though? Chris Wood doesn't quite get to it first. It's played over to Krishna who's absolutely shanked it. And it's gone well wide of the post. But again, it's a warning sign. We have been all over them for the first 25 minutes of this game. But now they are coming back into it. Are they going to get more shots? Are they going to get more opportunities? I've got a corner. Don't score it. They've scored it. We've left a defender wide open. Maybe a defender. Maybe. I, I have no idea. We've left Joseph wide open at the back post. No defenders there. And they've scored from a header. That is terrible defense. The man on the line can't even do anything about it. Is that McGarry? I think that was McGarry. I can't tell. It's too, too pixelated. I'm not going to blame him for it. But they should have been defending it. Maybe the goalkeeper could have even gotten to it. But without a doubt, there should have been a man on him. And they're on the ball once again. I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous. But McGarry comes in for the tackle. Are we going to get it back though? No, we're not. Krishnan's through. And Krishnan shot it just wide of the post. And I'm already starting to think maybe this tactical approach isn't the way to go. We're going to demand more from the side. Hope that we see a little bit more in the last five minutes. Maybe one more opportunity. We do have it. Thomas to whip in a ball. Finds Winston Reid almost. Actually, it was Chris Wood coming in there. And we've won a penalty. We're definitely giving that one to Chris Wood. Don't miss it, mate. You've got this. You're the best player in this entire competition. Standing on the penalty spot. And he scores it 2-1 just before halftime. I'm definitely making a few tactical tweaks, though. It is not going swimmingly. Definitely not as swimmingly as I thought it was going to go. We're still winning, though. So let's not panic too much. But we would like to be a wee bit more comfortable and they're on the ball again. I don't want to see them equalise before half time. That would absolutely throw all this positivity out of the, I don't know, out of the whatever we're on right now. Are we on a plane? We're on a car? I don't know. We're on something. But Barbaro says is through and maybe we're going to get some more positivity on the plane. Hasn't happened. He's shot it straight at the goalkeeper. And I'm kind of just hoping for the half time whistle now. Yes, we've gotten it. Oh, I don't know what to say. Uh, let's guard against complacency. We're winning, but we definitely need to keep our levels up. And I'm thinking that we might need to play slightly wider because we do like to whip those early balls in. It's been working really well. And we might go with... Oh, should we play on the left and right? I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe we should play on the left and right. That's been working well for us previously. Let's try that. Let's see if we can whip the balls in. Chris Wood is definitely a target in the central areas. I think it's an intelligent decision. Don't feel the need to make any tactical substitutions just yet. I'm not certain how many substitutions we get. I imagine it's just three. But we don't need to make any just yet. No one's feeling too tired. You know, I am going to check that. I'm going to see how many substitutions I can make. So just bring this man on, this man on. Just like to see, is it three? Yeah, it's three. Okay, we've already used one. We've got to be very tactical with our next few. Think about the next few games. Think about who's getting tired. Thinking about who we're going to need. But with 60 minutes gone in this one, we're still only one minute up, so we need to keep the focus. But I think we have gotten a couple more shots in the second half. I think that tactical change may have helped us. McGarry's standing over a free kick, and Wood's there, and he's headed it over the bar. I thought that was going to confirm the win. If we score another one, I'll feel a lot more confident, confident and comfortable. But I can see Smith in that centre-back position is looking a wee bit tired. So I'm going to bring Hudson Wahongi on to try and ride out the rest of the game. And I'm going to keep an eye on the rest of the players, see who gets tired early on, see who I'm going to need for the future games, and bring them off. McGarry over another free kick. It was a good first ball, and Hudson Wahongi off the bench almost comes away with a goal. Only 10 minutes to go. I would like a slightly more comfortable win than 2-1. But a win's a win, let's all be honest here. We're versing the best side in our entire group, apart from us. It's not a bad result, but it's almost been a 3-1 victory. Can we get one last chance? I think if we get one last chance, we'll score it. But I'm going to bring Chris Wood off, slightly controversi controversially, just because I want to make sure that he's fully fit for the next phase, the next game. He's our star player. Five minutes to go. Let's make sure it doesn't slip. Let's not give them a chance. Let's get a goal, potentially. Oh, we do have an opportunity. Sing. Whipping in a ball. Are we going to get it? Rojas is there and he's headed it into the back of the net. Maya Bevan from the corner tries to get it in. The goalkeeper's made a fine save. Somehow it counts as an assist to him. It's deflected off the goalkeeper and Rojas is just there. A man that's not exactly known for his heading ability. 
has put one into the back of the net from a header. Four minutes of additional time are all over and we've won this 1-3-1. And now I feel a lot more confident about the way that we've been playing. A great performance by us in the end. 3-1. He scored a goal against the run of play from a corner. It wasn't great, I will admit. But now we've got an injury worry. How long is Kakachi out? He's out for two days. Thank goodness I brought him off early. That is really not too much of an issue. If he was out for two weeks that would be a massive issue so we can take a look at the table now we are top of the table with our two goal two goal goal difference and now in the next episode we're going to come back to face Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands to hopefully put ourselves through on the top spot surely we're not going to lose any of these games we are the best side by far let's make sure that it stays that way this is where we're going to end today's episode though taking a look at the other team as well how did Group B do? We've got New Caledonia and Samoa leading the pack right now. I'm confident that we're going to win the entire thing. Let's make sure it does happen. Let's make sure that this first video does really well. So if you guys have made it all the way to the end and you haven't liked yet, please make sure that you do. It means so much to the channel. It helps people see this video, helps us get more people. And subscribe if you haven't. If you've made it to the end, you can't hate me that much. Come on, click that button. It's free. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I'll see you all later.